Some of the greatest advances in human history may be attributed to the Greek and Roman Golden Ages, despite to the fact that they all made significant contributions to the fields of the arts and science. The Greek Age of Pericles didn't last as long as Augustus Pax Romana. He never attempted to claim the title or had the official title. Augustus was in fact Rome's first empire. In order to understand the lifestyle of Roman society, it's necessary to examine the family, the smallest structural unit of society. The male head of the house had the most authority. The father of the family had the authority to make decisions about all members of the household. This decision also included the right to life of family members. A family man could make important decisions about his wife, children and slaves living in that house. The father played the role of the master of the family. In a sense, pedophile families served the patriarchal society. Only after the death of their father, the sons attained legal financial independence. Since the mother had no legal right over the children, the father had control over the children. The father's authority was so strong that, based on the authority given to him by the law, he could decide the death of the child when he was defective. In general, girls were left to die. The fate of newborn babies was in the hands of their fathers. A decision made between the father's lips was a death sentence for the baby. Families in Rome didn't consist of parents and children, but slaves were also part of the family. These slaves were considered property. Slaves were treated as goods that could be bought and sold. Even if a slave was freed, he was subject to his master for life. Even if freed, he couldn't be completely free. He never came into conflict with his master because there was a penalty for returning to slavery. Justice, by definition, means applying the law equally to everyone and being fair. This situation was not valid for the first periods of Rome. Although he concepts of the rule a law imposed by Rome was not applied in the early periods, it was eventually adopted by society. Today, the legal rules of many countries are based on the justice system of Roman law. Considering the structure of society, the question of how the concept of the rule of law emerged may come to mind. In the early days of Rome, justice was not something that everyone achieved. Wealth, property, social status difference, gender and freedom were important concepts that influenced justice. The law emphasizes justice to us regardless of social status, regardless of gender, Economic differences are ignored and everyone is considered equal before the law. The principle of equality of law was ignored as there were great obstacles in front of justice. There was no equality. The Roman Republic changed its name to the Roman Empire in 27 BCE when Augustus Julius Caesar's adopted son assumed power. Augustus developed an autocratic system of administration in which he acted as the only leader and the final arbiter of all major issues. Although he is known as the founding of Emperor of Rome, neither Augustus nor his successors ever used the titles of king or emperor, instead they preferred to refer to themselves as princeps, first citizens or primus inter peers, first among peers. The term that was chosen preserved the impression of restrained power that had been so crucial under the Republic.
The time between 27 BCE and 180 CE is referred to as the Pax Romana, a time when the Roman government was comparatively peaceful and the war was less common. Rome did not endure the civil wars that dominated much of the 1st century BCE. Instead, there were other conflicts such as provincial revolts and wars along the frontier. There were fewer elected political offices to contend for because the emperors and the senate controlled most elections and simply chose who they wanted in those positions. A series of destructive internal wars were put in and by Augustus, who it should be noted, came to power through victory in a civil war. Positive implication of internal stability on international relations. Rome was able to establish consistent trade with India and China, thus growing its material prosperity through more peaceful ways. The age of Augustus is one of the ages in that Western civilization improved the most. At this age, Roman Empire has both economic and military power. The empire established close relations with other civilizations and took a substantial place in the world history. On the eastern side of the empire, there was a civilization called part civilization. In the beginning, the Roman Empire got the western part of the civilization. Afterward, they had signed the peace settlement. However, Augustus didn't want to stick the settlement and the Roman civilization capture Anatolia, Syria and Mesopotamia. Also, at the age of Augustus' the civilizations, he made a great contribution to Roman culture by establishing close relations with the Greek and Egyptian civilizations and bringing many works of art and philosophical books there. But these two civilizations had already controlled by the Roman Empire. In 30 BC, the Roman Empire politically made Egypt its province. Besides, in 146 BC, the Roman Empire invaded Macedonia, the last independent state of Greek civilization, and began to control the Greek civilization. Augustus not only established relationships with nearby civilizations, he also establishes relations with some of the Far East civilizations like Indian and Chinese civilizations. Although Augustus followed a relatively peaceful policy on the eastern side, he followed a more aggressive and expansionist policy. Augustus was the first emperor of the Roman Empire and he was an emperor who made very significant contributions to Roman civilization in many fields. He made this contribution sometimes peacefully, sometimes politically and sometimes in bloody way. Since the Augustus period was the first imperial period of Roman civilization, expansionist movements were abundant. For this reason, various regions joined the Roman Empire and different social classes and the cultures emerged as a result of this. Examples of these regions are Rome, Italy, Africa and the East. Rome Rome, the capital of the empire, was a rich place both economically and politically. Especially during the Augustus period, the capital has become a symbol of wealth. For this reason, upper-class citizens and nobles lived in Rome and the class divisions formed among them. Italy, since the capital was located in this region, there was also nobles and upper-class people in the Italy region. Besides the nobles, there were also the working class, farmers and artisans, and there was a clear class distinction in this region. Africa was perhaps the poorest, the most uneducated and least developed region of the Roman Empire. The biggest reason for this was that the people in the center of the empire saw them as just a slave instead of human beings. East the region of the east of Roman Empire had a different social structure from most regions. More Greek culture was seen in the east of the empire. There was also social classifications in this region like Rome. By deducing from the above items, 
we can see that there were class distinctions in every region of the empire and we can clearly see that some places, especially far from the center, were less developed.